Hello, everybody. My name is Walid Hassan. I'm the chairman of urology here at the Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi, and I'd like to welcome you to another episode of The Doctor Is In. I'm joined by my colleague, Dr. Abi Ahmadi, the director of robotic surgery. And our goal today is to talk a little bit about uh, the robotic surgery, particularly in its use in, in, uh, in our field, uh, urology and urologic surgery, as well as robotic surgery in general. So welcome. Thank you, Walid. It's uh, my pleasure to be here. Uh, so as you know, robotic surgery is a very exciting topic to me and uh, to many, and to you, to many uh, surgeons in the field. Um, uh, robotic surgery, believe it or not, uh, has been there for more than 20 years. So it's not new, but I think the public knows more and more about it right now uh, because it has. Uh, it's now it's kind of diffusing, uh, and everyone is excited or is curious to know about robotic surgery. Uh, in robotic surgery, if you go back to the history of robotic surgery, it was in the late 90s where actually the U.S. Army and the NASA uh, were interested uh, in uh, doing remote surgery for various reasons, for obvious reasons actually. The Army, they want their surgeon to operate remotely away from the uh, war zone and NASA, they want uh, to do remote surgery from space. Of course, it was a very ambitious goal. But that's what triggers the idea of telesurgery or robotic surgery in the late 90s. Let's talk about, uh, for uh, the benefit of our audience, what is, what is it? What is robotic surgery? What does it actually mean? Somebody actually doing the operation? Is a robot doing the operation for you? Yes, I think we should definitely clarify that. Now, robotic surgery right now has expanded to include many subspecialties. So it's not only in our specialty, not only in surgical specialties, actually. It is uh, being used, the word robotic surgery, in many other, uh, name it, you name it, all types of surgical subspecialties. But for us specifically in neurology, it's called robotic visceral surgery. So basically, um, it is a minimally invasive surgery. I will always call it the new face of laparoscopy. It's a minimally invasive surgery that allows the surgeon to perform more accurate and more advanced surgery. But it's very important to know that it is totally, the robot is totally under the control of the surgeon. So it's not automatic or autonom automatic surgery where the robot will perform. It's basically, those are basically robotic arms that they are totally under the control of the surgeon. And the surgeon sit behind a console controlling those arms remotely and allow the surgeon to perform really meticulous uh, move and precise surgery. And um, what is it about the actual instruments that allow us to be able to, um, to do the kind of meticulous surgery that we do? So, so basically, as we evolve from open surgery, where the surgeon will have a big cut in his abdomen, um, we move to laparoscopy, which is a minimally invasive surgery. So instead of doing the big cuts, we used to make a tiny holes, uh, maybe half centimeter incisions, various three to four, five, maybe sometimes small incisions. And we put special uh, small instruments in the abdomen and perform this surgery. So this is a minimally invasive surgery or laparoscopy. The, and of course, the advantage to the patient were obvious, less pain. Uh, smaller scars, so cosmetically it looks more appealing, and the, they recover faster. The problem was the laparoscopy are the instruments used were very limited because uh, they are very stiff. They don't allow us, uh, they don't allow the wrist movement that we had, that the surgeon had in open surgery. And that's what the limitation of laparoscopy is. So someone expert like you in laparoscopy uh, overcame, overcame already this difficulty, but you know, it takes years of practice and learning before you master laparoscopic surgery. Uh, so robotic surgery came here to overcome that limitation. So it brought the best of open surgery, which is the wrist articulated motion of the instruments and brought it to a five millimeter size, like in laparoscopy. So it brought the best of the two worlds. So all the instruments that basically are available in open surgery were shrunk to small, tiny pinhole instruments uh, that allowed us to perform the surgery with the same accuracy like in open surgery. So you name it, the scissors, all the instruments that we use in open surgery are almost available in robotic surgery. And how does that translate into benefit for our patients? 
So the benefits are all the benefits of minimally invasive or laparoscopic surgery. So the patient will have only small, tiny incisions around five millimeter and uh, will have less pain, of course, and they recover much faster. Cosmetically will be better. Bleeding is usually much less. So all the advantages that we get from laparoscopy are obtained from robotic surgery. But the advantage, the main advantage for us surgeons is that because of those uh, delicate uh, instruments that move like the wrist and because we have 3D vision and because it's very immersive. So if you are a surgeon sitting behind the console, you feel yourself like inside the patient's abdomen. And of course, there are some computerized uh, update to the robot that it will filter the shaking and the tremor. So it's almost like tremorless uh, operation. So add to that the high definition 3D vision, the tremorless movement of the instruments, plus the, the articulation of the instruments. So all that results for a surgeon. And we are sitting behind a chair, operating, not standing for many hours. So it makes that uh, it allows us to do more accurate and more precise procedure with less fatigue to the surgeon. And that will result in some procedure, of course, not, in, not everything could be done robotic, um, and better outcome to the patient. So you know the Cleveland Clinic has been at the forefront of, of minimally invasive and robotic surgery for decades. Um, what type of surgeries can we do um, that... Uh, were not possible 10 years ago, 20 years ago. Yes. So as you know, and as many people know, Cleveland Clinic in the U.S. has pioneered minimally invasive and innovation in surgery. And here in Cleveland Clinic in Abu Dhabi, we are definitely following the same pattern of being leaders and innovative in, uh, in, in medicine in general, and, and particularly in robotic surgery. So we have the most advanced robotic surgery system available at our hospital. Um, the surgeries that we are doing right now are basically a better versions of the surgery we used to do 20 or 30 years ago. Take, for example, a robotic radical prostatectomy, which is uh, the robotic surgery used right now, which is the gold standard for prostate to remove cancer. for prostate cancer. As you remember, and when I and you were residents in training, we used to do those surgeries open. And with open surgery, it used to be a big surgery with lots of bleeding. The transfusion rate was around 20-30%. And, and that surgery was really a very um, challenging and demanding surgery, quite lots of expertise. So a clear example of the success of robotic surgery is the integration of the robot in performing that surgery. So now we do the surgery with the robot. It takes less time. It's definitely the bleeding is almost zero. I mean, in terms of transfusion, the rate is almost zero percent. And the outcome is, I think, better in many aspects in terms of preserving the erectile function, in terms of urinary control or continence, and without compromising the most important factor, which is the cancer control. So robotic surgery for prostate cancer is a clear example how that technology led to a much improvement in the outcome for the patient and also for us surgeons. And are there any um, diseases that are not cancer related that can be approached robotically? Yes, yes. basically, um, the, as you know, uh, mostly we use robotic surgery for cancer surgeries, but it can be used for non-cancer surgeries. And in, in our specialty in neurology, uh, robotic surgery has been utilized for reconstructive uh, urology where the, we need to, let's say if there's an injury of the ureter or the bladder, non-cancerous um, robotic surgery has been widely utilized. Any surgery in the abdomen that requires suturing or stitching, or it requires that wrist motion of the hands will be nicely done robotically. And that's why robotic surgery right now is going not only in urology, in general surgery, in gynecology, in many other specialties, more and more specialties are really embarking and utilizing robotic surgery in their practice. And one of the more exciting uh, things recently has been a robotic kidney transplant. Talk to us a little bit about that. Yes, so this is very exciting. And, uh, and I know Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi, they are pioneering robotic kidney transplant in the UAE and actually in, in the whole uh, Middle East. 
uh, the robotic kidney uh, transplant could be done on the donor side or on the recipient side. And of course, um, it offered all the advantages so the patient will have smaller incision, less bleeding. Um, but also, it provides very accurate, as you know, when we put the kidney in the pelvis, when we transplant that kidney, we have to stitch or attach the vessels together and the ureter. And doing that with the robot offers lots of precision and dexterity. And uh, uh, so the patient is benefiting not only from the advantage of having smaller scar, less pain, but also I believe the results should be better um, because of that accuracy of vascular anastomosis or suturing that we can achieve with robotic surgery. There have been, there's been so much uh, development um, in terms of technology, in terms of tactile feedback, in terms of vision. How do you see and what do you think there are or the exciting uh, new things that's going to happen in the next five years, for example? So um, really what's exciting right now is that um, we lost. So as you know, uh, the robotic surgery system has been uh, under the uh, kind of, we can call it under the control of one company. Uh, and lately, over the last four years, that company lost uh, its monopoly over the robotic system. So right nowadays, you are seeing so many uh, companies and countries developing their own mm -hmm. robots. So there are varieties of robotic surgery and different platforms. And, the, and many of those companies are innovating and uh, trying to solve the limitation that we had with the classic robotic surgery system. One of them, as you mentioned, is the tactile feedback or the haptic feedback, where uh, the robotic arms, traditionally, they cannot feel the tissue. So when we are operating with the robot, we compensate on that feeling through our visual feedback. Um, but one of the new development, of course, with the new system that you can even sense and you can feel the tissues uh, as if you are feeling them, almost like mm -hmm. as you are feeling them with your fingers. And of course, um, newer instruments are being added. Our ultimate goal to integrate, of course, the uh, artificial in intelligence or AI uh, to facilitate the visualization of the tumor, for example, also to guide us further in, the, um, in our procedures. So there are many things going on right now. And every time I go to one of those robotic surgery conferences, I'm fascinated with the number of the new robotic systems being displayed and soon will be available in many countries. And hopefully the cost will go down with that. So as you know, one of the main disadvantages of robotic surgery, it's expensive. Yeah. It's an expensive technology, um, and that has been a burden or a, a, a preventive thing for many third world countries to adopt it, or some hospitals, they, it's still very expensive technology. So with the availability of many different surgical platforms, hopefully the cost will go down, and that will make it more um, affordable and more adopted in many places and in many countries. Another exciting thing is telesurgery and uh, telemedicine. What examples can you give us of, is it possible yet to operate yeah, remotely? You know, as I told you in the beginning, that's what the initial idea of, right. of developing robotic surgery is to have that telesurgery. Right now, after 20 years of initiating, more actually 25 years of initiating the idea, it's becoming a reality. Because telesurgery, in addition to some of the uh, bird, you know, some logistics issues because you have to operate, let's say, here in Abu Dhabi and operating on a patient in Africa, for, exa for example. There are lots of uh, policies uh, in that, but technicality, it's already becoming applicable and available uh, because now there's the, the 5G system and hopefully new, uh, newly, will, recently will, uh, we should have the 6G system so that communication between the main robot and the other robot will be feasible. So basically telesurgery will have the surgeon, let's say, sitting here in Cleveland Clinic in Abu Dhabi, operating remotely on a patient across the continent. And that's the technology is available right now. And it has been actually uh, done in a few centers already. And I think in the coming years, we'll be seeing more and more of those surgeries being performed. I mean, imagine a world where a patient anywhere could get access to 
uh, an experienced surgeon anywhere in the world. Yes, and that's the whole idea behind it, and it's really very fascinating because um, we are privileged here to have a quick access to excellent health care. But unfortunately, this is not available in many countries in the, in, in the globe. And the idea of remote uh, telesurgery hopefully will be a fix and a, a solution for those uh, countries or remote areas where they don't have access either to the surgeon or to the technology. If the robots, if the price of robots will go down, the price won't be an issue anymore. Sure. So we can fix at least the, uh, the problem we have in getting access to a good talented surgery, uh, surgeon by performing the surgery remotely it will be you or I, for example, sitting here and performing a robotic surgery or prostatectomy on someone in one of uh, underserved uh, countries. And that's hopefully it will be the future in the coming years. Uh, would you say um, that robotic surgery is routine? Routine? Our robotic surgery still uh, requires lots of training and teaching. Um, and not every surgeon is qualified mm -hmm. to perform robotic surgery. So, um, you know, I've been performing it for, for 20 years, actually, since it started in 2004, almost. And it took me many years of practice before I, I felt I'm like mastering this sure. surgery. So for those trained in robotic surgery, it can, it is already routine for many of their procedures. Now in the future with the new generation of surgeons being all trained to perform robotic surgery, and you know in the US all uh, residency program, they are, it's mandatory to include now robotic surgery in their training. So the new generations of surgeons will be definitely sure. automatically trained to do robotic surgery. And thus for many of them, robotic surgery is going to be a routine surgery. And it's going to be uh, the new face, I call it this way, of minimally invasive or laparoscopic surgery. Sure. Well, this has been very enlightening. I appreciate you taking the time to uh, clarify things for our patients and uh, to highlight the uh, exciting developments uh, and uh, the really the fascinating things that we can do for our patients where we can do really complex surgeries and get them out of the hospital uh, within uh, a, a very, very short period of time with minimal pain and a quick return to their, to their normal lives. Thank so you. thank you very much. It's a pleasure thank to you. have you. Thank you for having me, and I'm very excited uh, to uh, join uh, your team at the Cleveland Clinic in Abu Dhabi, and I'm uh, very excited to offer uh, our patients the state-of-the-art robotic surgery here.